this is the most horribly shot motion sickness inducing footage ever i'm not ashamed to admit but it still has enough information to get some 3d geometry out of it and that's what this video is all about exploring how good or not video is for photogrammetry Ever since I started experimenting with photogrammetry, I wanted to give this a try, but I always kept postponing it, mostly because I knew already that you can't really beat stills when it comes to photogrammetry, but it's still something interesting to research. In theory, with enough resolution, videos could compete with photographs. After all, a video is just a series of still images, so with enough resolution, a video could do the trick. So an 8K RED camera, for example, could give us some good results. Better at least than consumer video cameras or phones where they usually top out at 4K. But using a RED camera for something like this is like buying a Maserati to do your groceries. Not the best tool for the job. The main problem with using videos to scan an object is that we have to combat two things. The first one is what we've already discussed, the resolution. With photogrammetry we need as much resolution as we can get, so a 4K image that also has a lot of compression artifacts is not the best starting point. Here's two images side by side. The left side is an image grab from a video, and the second one is shot with the exact same camera, but as a still. With a still image we have so much more resolution to work with, and we can get a whole lot of detail out of it. The more detail the image has, the more detail the final object will have. The second issue that works against us is motion blur. Stills don't really have that issue unless we shoot handheld and with low shutter speeds. But this is really easy to combat. We can just use a tripod and everything is taken care of. But with videos, motion blur is hard to get rid of. We want the final image to be as sharp as possible because less blur means more detailed capture. And as a result, our 3D model will be more accurately described and with more details. The way to combat motion blur is to shoot with faster shutter speeds. This is the typical motion blur when shooting at 25 frames per second and 1 50th of a second. It closely mirrors how we perceive things in real life and it's perfect for movies but it's not ideal for photogrammetry. The motion blur blocks the detail and the boundaries of each object. So in order for us to freeze the motion, we need to increase the shutter speed. Here's how things look when we do that. The motion blur is almost gone and we now have enough detail to work with. But of course, faster shutter speeds mean less light hitting the sensor. So in order for us to not be underexposed, we need to either shoot in brightly lit areas or in a controlled environment. Brightly lit areas can bring their own set of issues since that introduces a lot of shadows and unevenness to our object. As you can already tell, there's a lot of compromises and variables we need to figure out when shooting with video. And if in the end we have to go through all this trouble, we might as well shoot stills. There's one thing though video has going for it, and that's shooting speed. It's much faster to capture an object because we can just walk around it as we're recording. It's definitely less time consuming than setting things up for still images. So with all that in mind, let's see what kind of detail we can get with video. I first want to try things out in a controlled environment to give the footage the best chance possible. The subject of our test is this tasty looking bread. I shot it twice, once as stills and then as a 50 frames per second video and of course with a fast shutter speed. In order for me to brighten up the image, I had to compensate by lowering the f-stop, so the video has more depth of field than I would have liked, but it's still good enough. In hindsight, I could have used a slower shutter speed since I'm rotating the bread quite slowly, but as they say, hindsight is 2020. So here's the two models side by side. Initially, if you just quickly glance at them and don't pay too much attention, they both look really good. Once we start inspecting different areas though, it's quite easy to figure out which is which. The model using the video data has fewer sharp details. The texture is doing a good enough job to mask the issues, but we can still tell that some areas lack detail. Of course, once we disable the texture, it's immediately obvious that one object has a ton more detail compared to the other. Could we get by with a lower detail mesh? Absolutely, but it's better to capture as much detail as possible and then get rid of it rather than the other way around. So this was the ideal scenario, perfect lighting, speed control, etc. From this point forward, <laughs> things go downhill 
pretty fast. I'm mostly to blame here, but even without me making things difficult for myself, the results wouldn't be that great compared to stills. I decided to take things outside just to see what kind of results we can get in a more challenging environment. I first tried this park bench, which is a simple enough shape, and in theory at least it wouldn't be that difficult to reconstruct. This is the point where I start making a series of mistakes. The specific lens I'm using is hunting quite a bit, so there's a constant focus shift, and in combination with the fact that the GH5 is notoriously horrible in autofocus, the images are not the sharpest. And for some reason, I also walk backwards <laughs> instead of forwards, making the video bounce around wildly. I have no clue what I was thinking, but I did that in pretty much all videos after this one. So it's no surprise that the resulting mesh is a bit too bumpy and weird. Considering though all the challenges and the fact that all this is coming out of a one and a half minute video, the results are not that bad. It's certainly good enough for a sketch. If you're walking about and you stumble on a good looking object, you can just quickly capture it with your phone's camera and then revisit with proper equipment. The resulting mesh is also describing the object well enough to allow us to use it as a reference, just as a guide to build our own model from scratch. All in all, I would call this a mild success. I then stumbled on this interesting looking tree trunk. Once more, I'm using the always hunting for focus lens and I also walk like a drunk, so the footage is as bad as my previous attempt. This one is a short video, 1 minute and 18 seconds to be exact. The final mesh is nothing amazing, but like before, the shape is described adequately enough. As a sketch, I think it's really good, but of course, it's nothing more than that. I wouldn't use it as a final production model. I finally switched the lens for the next few objects, and even though I still walk like a drunk, the lens at least is not constantly hunting for focus. It's a start. It's nothing too crazy quality-wise, but we can immediately see an improvement in the object's resolution. One of the reasons for that extra detail is because I went a bit closer to the object, so more of that fine detail is captured. This one was a longer video, closer to 2 minutes. If I remember correctly, I grabbed one image every 20 frames or so, so the software didn't have to process all 5,900 frames, otherwise I would still be processing this one single object. I experimented with a few more objects after this one, and the results were quite similar. A gimbal and some more attention to focus would have resulted in much better looking results. The footage I used is just good enough to get a feel of the different forms and the overall look of the objects. In total, I don't think I spent more than 5 or 10 minutes capturing all these objects, and this is where video capturing excels. You don't really need to spend too much time to get a half decent result, which comes in handy when you're not exactly sure what you're looking for. You can scatter a location quickly, grab a couple of footage, and then you can figure out which one deserves a second trip with proper shooting conditions. Drones are perfect for capturing outdoor areas, especially if we want to scan large landscapes. Footage out of a drone will be incredibly stable and at the same time we have a ton of control in placement since the drone can go pretty much everywhere. It's definitely something I want to try out, so maybe at some point in the future I will experiment with that as well. So, what have we learned from this experiment? When shot properly, and that's key, video can give us some good results. It cannot compete with stills, but for captures that don't need a ton of detail or for quick and dirty sketches, video is perfectly fine. In most cases, the dynamic range of the video won't be as high as a raw image, so that's another thing to keep in mind when using videos for scanning. You might have some issues when preparing the final texture. And that's it for this video. Let me know what you thought of the results in the comments below. Take care, and I'll see you in the next one.